Answers to these questions and more from the man who knows it all. Oh, I was born in a Petri dish in Laboratory, Pennsylvania. My parents thought I was a dog and sent me to the pound. I was sent to a dog obedient school where the vets know how to train ya. Then to uh, university, the finest school around. Yes, uh, university was a well-respected college. I learned of space and vinegar, bugs and styling gel, of toothpaste time, the speed of light, flowers, trees, and dirt. Things that stink and noisy things and things that creep and squirt. Today I'm not a doctor, but you can call me one. Some folks call it science, but I just call it fun. Upon my every statement, you can have complete reliance. I know more than you do. Call me Dr. Science. I have a master's degree in science. From out of the sea he come. Thousands flee in terror. Ah! Watch out, Tokyo. Godzilla is coming. Hi, Dr. Science. Oh, uh, Rodney, yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, tell me, Rodney, uh, where were you? Huh? I was uh, doing my laundry. Your laundry? Rodney, Rodney, Rodney. When you enter a laundromat on a full moon night, you're dealing with forces beyond moral comprehension. I thought I was washing my socks. Your socks? Worse and worse. Tell me, Rodney, did you come back one sock short? Yeah, now that you mention it? It could already be too late. Too late? Yes, allow me to illustrate. Dracula. Habitat, Transylvania. Specialty, sucking the blood of victims. Mummy. Habitat, Egyptian pyramids. Specialty, limping around stiffly covered in bandages. Sock monster, habitat, laundromat. Specialty, he eats socks. You see, if you go to a laundromat on a full moon night, you're not only taking your life, but your socks into your own hands. But what if your clothes are dirty? Well, that won't happen, thanks to my new invention. A sweatshirt that cleans itself. You see, little tiny hamsters in cages are sewn into the fabric. Then soap and those little green scrubby things are surgically implanted in their paws. All our hamsters ran away. Yeah, you'd run away too if you were trapped in a cage in the clothes of a sweaty person. You're right as usual, Dr. Science. Well, enough haberdashery. Rodney, we've got to check your laundry hamper for sock monster eggs. You do it. Be careful, Rodney. Zeke! Don't do that. Yeah, it's too early in the show for mail call. Gee, that is the weirdest looking stationery I've ever seen. That's not mail, it's my dirty clothes. Ooh. There's no letters today. I'm going to the laundromat. The laundromat? Fools! Idiots! Don't they realize they're dealing with forces beyond comprehension? Did he call me an idiot? Not you, just what you represent. I can see I'm going to have to start from ground zero with you two. And that means old science. That means Philco. Anybody got a quarter? Nuh-uh. I need them all for the dryer. When I've said my piece, Zeke, you'll never dry your clothes again. Oh, all right. Uniforms are all drip dry anyway. Roll on, Philco. Roll on. Take us from the distant past to the terrified future. Our ignorant past. They say clothes make the man, but what do clean clothes make you? They make you nervous because you're a prime target for sock monsters. Yes, even our primitive ancestors knew the importance of clean clothes, even though they didn't wear any. But they were smart enough to stay away from laundromats and do their washing by hand or paw, I guess you'd say. They didn't monkey around when it came to avoiding monsters. Yes, monsters. Here we see a gathering of ghouls in this rare footage of a monster convention. I'm Otto the Skunk Face Boy. I'm Frida the Frog Girl. I don't belong here. I've just been walked with an ugly stick. One monster who's really made it big is Bigfoot. And here he is with his fan club. They're measuring Bigfoot size 28 high tops. Ooh, Bigfoot, what big feet you have. Better to kick you with, my dear. <laughs> Being big as he is, Bigfoot stands tall as a target for the sock monster. But Bigfoot has outsmarted the sock monster by never washing his socks. Now everyone can follow his example. I never wash my socks. Me neither. What's that got to do with the price of a wash load? Well, when the centrifugal or clockwise motion of the washer 
meets with the anti-centrifugal, or a clock stupid, motion of the dryer, they combine to create a third force, static clang. There lies monsters, gentlemen. Sock monsters, especially on nights when the moon is full. Gee. Where do you think you're going? To the laundromat. Fools, idiots! Don't they realize they're dealing with forces beyond comprehension? <laughs> what was that? What was what? Too late. We're doomed. Just when you think you've seen everything on television, meet the women of Cell Block J. The hooker, Bonnie. She does more tricks than Houdini. The killer, Dawn. Some men would die for her. The genius, Pam. She's brains behind bars. The thief, Eve. She banks only at night. The princess, Vicky. No credit limit could stop her. There's nothing else like it on television. Women in Prison, Saturday at 8.30 on Fox Channel 11. clothes back please oh, try pretty please sometimes he responds to that isn't one sock monster enough can't you feel its presence they attack boom crash whoop, 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 whoop. call 911 call the army too late it takes two quarters to wash and dry you can't end the world with 50 cents you can end the world for 35 cents if you're a smart shopper i know a place where antimatter goes for 25 cents a pound throw in 10 cents worth of 224 trimethyl pentane and Boom! Crash! <laughs> Call 911! Call the army! Too late. Hey, Zeke! Since you're going to the laundromat already, could you wash a few of my things, too? The laundromat? Fools! Idiots! There he goes again. Now look what you made him do! Don't they realize they're dealing with forces beyond comprehension? Did I hear someone say they're going to the laundromat? Hey, too, Judy. Can't you sense it? The static. The damp. Can't you sense its presence? Seems normal to me, as normal as it gets. I don't know why I bother. I really don't. I try to unload the trunks from my mental attic, and what thanks do I get? Yeah, what thanks does he get? Let me take a wild guess. No thanks at all. No thanks at all. Now, what are we supposed to thank you for? For saving you from monsters. They attack! Boom! Oh, no, no, no! I'm locking my dirty clothes in the closet until he stops trying to wrestle them. And I'll be guarding my laundry with some pretty sophisticated weapons, so don't anybody get any funny ideas. Will no one believe me? Rodney, you look good in a vest. We're supposed to be afraid of the laundromat? Be afraid. Be very afraid. I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm always afraid. I'm afraid Dr. Science is nuts. Nuts, am I? Mad? Well, at least I have the sense to be afraid. Yes, I, Dr. Science, am afraid. Afraid of something down there below our feet. Something that wants our sanity. Something that wants our socks. Something about this size and height. Something like the miracle of oculum vehiculans. Aki, I know. Yes, Aki will take us to visit the lair of the maddest scientist of them all and bring these doubters proof of monsters. Vamanos, muchacho! I don't think Dr. Science's oars are touching water. Shh! Boga, boga, boga! <laughs> Did I scare you? No. And uh, if you dare, Dr. Breakfast, House of Paul! Dr. Breakfast? <laughs> That's not a very scary name. Oh, it scares me! <laughs> uh, what do you do? Monsters! I create very scary monsters! Come see my pets if you dare! Behold the beast with the large thumbs! Ah, 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 look at the size of those thumbs! Ah. What's scary about big thumbs? Uh, nothing, I guess. Uh, wait, wait! Behold the beast with the smelly feet! Oh, 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 these things are all! Oh, I got them! Thanks, anyway. No, no, wait! I have zombie ants! How do you tell the difference between a zombie ant and a real one? You can't! That's the scary part! I got a were-cow in the back! It's like a werewolf, only it's a cow! Is it human when the moon isn't full? No, it's a cow then, too! Uh, I guess it's pretty much a 
cow all the time. What will it? The vampire penguin. <laughs> it ought to call with a thirst for blood. Sorry, not interested. No, wait. How about this? The guy that lives next door. Keep it quiet in here or I'll nail you. Now that's scary. One final question. What's the most frightening place you've ever been? That's easy, the laundromat. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. thanks, Dr. Breakfast. Now get out of here, or I'll give you a knuckle sandwich. Oh, 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 oh. Don't hurt me, don't hurt me. What does that teach you what fear is all about? Where'd everybody go? So I spent eight years at science school. My thesis was called Subatomic Heat Transference in Today's Lifestyle. Then I thought I'd try my hand at real estate, but instead I wound up here. <laughs> oh, hi, Dr. Science. Judy's telling us her life story. It's fascinating. Go on, Judy. Pardon me for interrupting you, but did any of you notice anything at all about what Aki was just showing us? No, I'm sorry. We forgot to pay attention. Well, there's one other thing you didn't notice. What? Your pants are gone! Ah! I got a pair of underwear just like that. I didn't fall asleep. I didn't fall asleep. I was just resting my eyes for a minute. And that's when the alleged perpetrator struck. Suspect took my dirty clothes. Suspect took my uniform. No one leaves this room until the culprit has been brought to justice. The sock monster! Don't panic. The first thing we have to do is find this monster. I trust you all believe me now. Excuse me, when are we going to the laundromat? My clothes aren't getting any cleaner, you know. To find this monster, we need to have a detector. Judy, vacuum cleaner. Check. Zeke, bicycle handlebars. Check. Mr. Pickett, your watch. Why? I just like it. Rodney, your odor eater. Check. Now I'll just take the vacuum cleaner, put it there. Take the reverse polarities. Now add the odor eaters. Is this machine gonna get my t-shirts whiter than white? Done. If this thing can't find that monster, nothing can. This way. Creature is hidden in your sock hamper. Clever. That's the last place I'd have looked. What about my laundry? Oh, Mr. Weiner. Mr. I don't care what happens to the rest of the universe as long as my underwear is lemony fresh. You want your laundry done? Well, I'll do your laundry myself in the science room. But while I'm gone, no matter what happens, don't anybody look in that hamper. Judy, bring his laundry. Rodney, bring his laundry. Zeke, what? I'm going to bring his laundry. Wish Dr. Science had washed my uniforms while he's at it. I don't know what HQ would think if they saw me performing my duties in my underwear. Underwear or no underwear, I better get back to the front desk. The guest book is up there unprotected. Some guest might steal it. If we ever had a guest. Don't look in that hamper. We'll see about that. Sock monsters. I've never heard of anything so ridiculous in my... What does light up your life? A power company. A town in New Jersey named after him. Yes, of course, but what do I have that Edison doesn't have? Uh, can we get back to you on that? I'm the first scientist to have his very own fan club. How do we join? Where do we send? What do we get? I'm glad you asked. Toast right to this address and we'll send you free a button, a sticker, and a letter. Join today. Wow, something free from Dr. Science. This is a breakthrough. <laughs> Here's Cal Worthington and his dog, Spot. This is how you wash your clothes? Yeah, two rocks in a cold mountain stream, just the way our ancestors did it. This isn't a cold mountain stream. It's hard to get a cold mountain stream in the lab. That's why I haven't washed my clothes in 14 years. But enough about my personal hygiene. Judy, if we're going to attack that monster, we've got to be prepared. Do you want to check the protective gear? Fine. Waterproof raincoat. Check. Bleach. Check. Clothespins. Check. Checks. Check. Checks? We might resort to bribery. 
Hey, what's this you're working on? That assignment you gave me. I'm trying to bond soap and cotton to create a self-cleaning fabric. Ah, a sweatshirt that cleans itself. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good idea. Have you thought of hamsters? Hamsters? Yeah, little tiny hamsters sewn into the fabric with little scrubbies in their paws. Dr. Science, why would a hamster want to be in the cage in the clothes of a sweaty person? Good point. Back to that checklist. Ah, monster socks, Dr. Science, Mommy. Dr. Science, we've got to stop that thing or I'll be running around bare naked. Rodney, get a hold of yourself. What happened? Mr. Pick has disappeared. That's good. And the sock monster has grown as big as a tree. That's bad. Where is it? Ah, behind you. Get that thing trapped in there, Dr. Science. He likes these old socks. Eats them like candy. <sighs> Wish I had my trusty Wilkinson Art 6. <laughs> I'd rip that monster in half. <laughs> oh, no, wait. One of those Belgian Bulletmeister 610s. <laughs> 40 rounds a second. <laughs> no, wait. A haagen pipe. No, that's not a gun. That's ice cream. Oh, no, Z. Yes, sir. That thing was horrible, Rodney. It's kind of like a wilted Christmas tree with old sweat socks on it. Enough sentiment. We have to get that creature out of there and back into that hamper where it belongs. Zeke, I want you to open that door just a crack so we can see what we're dealing with here. Just in time, I could feel that thing tugging on my Bermuda shorts. Then your shorts would have been in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> I don't like that kind of humor. Just as I thought. Lint, sweat, static electricity caked on dirt. That's what this little boy's made of. But a cup of laundry detergent. Used as directed, and that thing would fall apart like a $50 suit. Let's do it. Don't be a fool, Zeke. Then we'd have 50 million little sock monsters running amok. America would soon be bare naked, as Rodney puts it, and the world as we know it, everybody, would well, yeah. We've got to get that creature back where it belongs. Does that mean Mr. Pickett has to come back here? Unfortunately, yes, but don't worry. I have a plan. It's a crazy kind of goofy one, but it just might work. Okay, you're looking at the California-equipped Dodge Shadow and the Nissan Sentra SE Sport Coupe. See the difference? The Shadow's got a turbo engine the Sentra doesn't even offer, and a 770 protection plan it can't beat, plus AC and over 45 other standard features for how much less comparably equipped? About 500 bucks. The competition pales in comparison. See what I mean? Dr. Science, you had a plan. I did? Oh, yeah. Judy, stand by the door. Check. Rodney, hold the detergent. That soap is the garlic to the vampire, the silver bullet to the werewolf. The detergent to a sock monster. Keep thinking, Rodney. Zeke, go get some ice cream. Go! When this thing's over, we're gonna be hungry. Maybe naked and hungry, I don't know. When I give the signal, Rodney, I want you to open up that door and throw that detergent at the sock monster. At precisely that moment, I will be putting the laundry hamper over Mr. Pickett. Now, theoretically, this should cause both the washer and the dryer to run backwards, sending both those creatures back where they belong. Questions? Yeah, what's the signal? When I say now. Now. No, not now, Rodney. So now isn't the signal. Yes, now is the signal when I say now. Now. No, not now, now, Rodney. Now, later. How can it be now, later, Dr. Science? It can only be now, now. That's how time works. Rodney, listen to me. I'm going in the transponder. Dr. I'm going... Science, I'll give him the signal. Are you ready to say now, too? This is getting really confusing. Good luck to the two of you. We'll need it. Louis Pasteur, be with me now. Now? No, not now, Rodney. Is that now, now, or another now later? Now! 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 So, Sock Monster, we meet at last. You may think you have me at your mercy, but I know your Achilles heel. I'll knock your socks off with fabric softener. Are you all right? 
I'm okay. But how often do you change your socks? Once a year? I have to call the laundry police. He's normal. Well, normal's a relative term. I hope you all learned something from today's episode. Actually, I can't say that this has had any educational benefit whatever. Me neither. I know what we learned. When we wash our clothes, we release monsters. When we don't wash our clothes, we smell funny. My life sure is complicated. Telegram for the laundry police, Dr. Science. You've been fined $50 for doing laundry without a license. I told you progress had a price. Rodney, run up and get $50 from the cash stashed in my sock drawer. Sock drawer! <laughs> High performance luxury sedans. Tra Bunch of dumb questions today. Speaking of dumb, my laundry still isn't done, you know. Rodney, you give a man his life, he complains about his pants. Did you save his pants? Of course not. Just get to the questions, Rodney. Oh, that's personal. <laughs> Well, Dr. Science, our first question is from Debbie Whippet from Sudzer Duds, Nebraska, who writes, Dear Dr. Science, if cleanliness is next to godliness, what is dirtiness next to? It's next to cleanliness. You see, cleanliness occupies a midway position between dirtiness and godliness. It's a dirty job, but that's why they call it cleanliness. Next question. <sighs> From Mickey Mall Rat in Mousy, Pennsylvania. Dear Dr. Science, I always thought those rolled up socks kind of looked like eggs. If you hatch one, what will happen? I'm appalled by your ignorance. Those aren't sock eggs, they're sock seeds. You see, each sock consists of four parts. Heel, toe, spandoflex, and ribonucleic acid. When you roll up the sock, you're actually releasing the ribonucleic acid, which causes the sock to mutate. Just as a caterpillar becomes a moth, so does your sock become a shoe. A shoe? Because it's tight. Usually a size 15 wingtip, which is why this process has little practical value. Well, thank you, Dr. Science. Knowledge is my life. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Sam suspects that Lois is the source of the White House press leak and has to do something about it on Mr. President. Saturday, Beverly Hills, California, 90213. He'll be sure to answer you. I will? Sure you will. When I get around to it.